Hi, welcome back to Fruitful Minutes. Today we're doing another Q&A where we go through some commonly asked questions from customers at our stores. And we've got Dr. Callie and Jessica from our education team to help us answer them. So let's dive right in. The first question is, I'm sensitive to dairy and gluten. You already know where this is going. Yes. <laughs> if I take a dairy enzyme or a gluten enzyme, can I still have foods like pizza? I love this question okay. because people come in all the time. And I, I understand the frustration. They just want to have those foods that they used, were used to yeah. having. But those are more meant for, um, you know, in case of like a cross-contamination. Like maybe I want to still go out to oh. dinner with my friends, but even though I have these restrictions, I still want to live, you know, somewhat normally. And a lot of restaurants are trying to be more friendly to people and their different allergies. Yeah, right. But it's more meant like, okay, I'm going to order the gluten-free meal. I'm still going to take my gluten enzyme. <laughs> Okay. God right. forbid there is some cross contamination and then you don't overreact. Right. Okay. okay. So it's not meant to like, right. okay, I'm dairy free. Well, I'll just take the dairy free like enzyme it's a vitamin and have, or something. Yeah, and have <laughs> right. all the ice cream I want. It doesn't work like it, it doesn't, doesn't cancel anything oh, out. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. people do think it's a very common thought. They see the dairy enzymes and they're like, I can just hit. I'm like, no, yeah. no, no. Right. It's not the free for all. Mm -hmm. I also encourage people, um, you know, like if you're going somewhere over the holidays or at some family function and gathering and people are home making things okay. and they don't understand what has gluten, what is dairy, that kind right. of stuff. Like, right. you know, like cream of mushroom soup has like a lot of wheat in it when it's conventional. So okay. like people don't realize even where those ingredients are. Okay. So I don't trust my own family's cooking. Okay. Depending on what it is. So I will make sure that I'm doing like those. a safety net. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is not the you get would, a free pass. Right. Would you say that it could also depend though on like your sensitivity level? Cause there's some people who are like allergic or might have more of an intense response. What if it's like, oh I just get a little bit of, you know, disruption with the dairy. Could you use that? So you're like, still for... going to get disruption. This right. is the thing, right? You're okay. still going to feel right. upset. You're still going to have okay. your same reactions. It should be able to go, because the enzymes are made to get rid of those proteins right. faster. Right. So you should have maybe lesser symptoms. Okay. You're still going to have symptoms. <clears throat> right. You should be able to get over those symptoms okay. faster. You're still going to have those symptoms. And people mm, think, okay. oh, this just cancels out the fact that I'm going to do gluten. It's mm, not. Okay. <laughs> it's going to help you get over yeah, right. what your reactions right. are faster. Okay. But it's not taking any of that away. So it's a good safety net. It's just something to have in your back pocket right. for occasions. Right. right. That's good to know. Right. And I keep some in my purse just in case I'm exposed, right? So afterwards, okay. if I notice, oh my gosh, something must have had gluten in it, right. I will take them after the fact to okay. get it out of my system so much faster, okay. right? Like those are how those are supposed mm. to be used, not I'm going to take my enzymes and get away with my pizza. <laughs> right. It's not. Right. Insightful. Not. Insightful. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next question. Also digestive related. So how do I know which fish oil will be burpless? Because, you know, there's a lot of labels that say, yeah. like, no fishy burp up or any anything like that. So right. what are we... Well, for starters, one thing people have to remember is that if they're starting to incorporate a fish oil into their regimen, their body hasn't acclimated to that extra fat. So sometimes your body just needs to play a little catch up with oh, making okay. those additional enzymes. Plus, they should always be taking a fish oil with food. Yeah. If you take it on an empty stomach, why wouldn't you burp that up? I think anybody would. But going into like the individual companies, companies know that people have this concern and every company may take a different approach. Some company oh, puts enzymes, okay. some companies um, do different different purification processes. Or a coating I've seen to the, the enteric, enteric coating, coating. But you can't really guess which one you're going to respond to in that way. You do have to find one that agrees with your body. Okay. Um, but yes, multiple companies have their own way of okay. approaching that concern. Okay. Yeah. So. And I would say most people, um, again, like Jessica said, like doing the fish oil with food is important. And a lot of people are just trying to do it empty stomach. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to burp that up. Yeah. It's fat in yeah. your stomach without any meal. So your body is not is just hanging out there. Right. Um, some people switch it up and do the oil in their smoothies and they find that that's an easier way to do it. I was going to say maybe it. the oil because there's less yeah. breakdown, right? Right. It's or just oil. Um, maybe switching instead of like a fish oil to trying one of the algae oils that's plant-based. Okay. Yes. Right? Those My I don't favorite. think have as m many like the burping type things, even though it's still a fat and oil. Um, it's plant-based, so some people's bodies are maybe going to break that down better. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it is sometimes a trial and error thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Last question. So I'm vegan. What supplements should I be considering? This could be a big one. To like fill in the gaps. I right? think that's probably, yeah. So maybe it's like <clears throat> I'm going to go vegan and kind of being conscious of a lack of iron maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Or things that you would normally get from 
meat. Like B12, I can think. They say right, B12 right. is a big one. There are some okay. amino acids um, like carnosine and carnitine mm-hmm. um, that are typically animal-based um, things that people are normally getting, but there are vegan options for okay. those people, and those are typically <clears throat> amino acids that are going to be lacking in a plant-based diet. Okay. Um, but B vitamins are the big one, especially okay. B12. Mm-hmm. Um, there are B vitamins in plants, but not everybody's body absorbs them well and or converts them to usable form. So a lot okay. of times, especially especially with B12 um, because B12 is found in what like lemon peel. It's like weird stuff that you're not really eating a ton of anyways as a plant-based. So like, okay. So if you're taking a multi already though, it's got some of those. Are we talking maybe considering additional B12 or additional? Additional B12 or there are some uh, multis that are specific for vegans that Mm -hmm. are are already going to have those nutrient levels kind of geared toward the fact that they're not getting that in in a, a easily usable source. Right. Got it. Right. Yeah. Cool. And cool. then you even mentioned the iron, like just getting yeah. some of our minerals from the meats and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, and also I feel like people kind of forget that you probably get nutrients through plants that you just kind of you get forget. Tons. Like you do get yeah. iron through greens. You don't right. just get it from red right. meat, right? right. Okay. Right. Like so yeah. iron, spinach. If you're eating tons of spinach, there's iron. Um, people worry about calcium because they're not getting dairy. Mm, and yes. that one, you actually get more calcium from like cabbage, broccoli, spinach. kale, yeah. spinach yeah. than you did out of dairy anyway. So a lot of times people are trying to do a lot of calcium and they probably don't need a lot of extra calcium versus the B vitamins you need to supplement yes, with almost always. And mm-hmm. also just to piggyback, because I feel like it's just a trend right now, the collagen, because if you're vegan, you're pro- you can't do collagen. Right. But yes. things you could consider to boost that. One of my favorites is silica. Um, mm-hmm. I actually use our cell food silica yeah, brand. It's a liquid that. one. Mm-hmm. Um, we my talked new- about that before. Yes, and that's great for stimulating collagen production and great. It most of the time comes from like an herbal source, like um, nettle, horsetail, things okay. like that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's more of a mineral type situation versus collagen is an animal based right. product. Right. Um, so even people who are maybe vegetarian and doing fish, we do have fish based collagen. Right. Um, so that's an option. But for oh, vegans, okay. it is silica. It's more like of that that's promoter. the best option. Right. That, yeah. that we've mm-hmm. got. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anything else to add, ladies? Looks no? Like yeah, that was really Those helpful. Are Those are, we got yeah. some good questions good. coming in. Hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about what we talked about or maybe something else, feel free to send us a direct message or leave it in the comments. We'd like to do more of these. We look forward to seeing you on the next Fruitful Minutes.